Praising children for the right things at the right time is what's going to get them and encourage them to repeat the same actions again and so that they can develop their confidence. But children who have been praised excessively can become narcissistic or arrogant as they get older. Essentially, if we're constantly telling our children that they're perfect or they're the best at something without providing constructive feedback on how they can improve, this is when they, they start to experience entitlement. Welcome back to another Warrior Academy podcast episode. Today, I'm going to be asking the question of can praise lead to narcissism? So that's quite a big question. I'd love to hear your thoughts as always. What are your thoughts on this? Have a listen to the whole episode uh, and then let me know if you believe that is correct. If you disagree, I also want to know it as well. Now, praise is really important. And in the, one of the last episodes, I talked about the golden hour, right? Praising children appropriately within the context of what they've achieved is really important. Praising children for the right things at the right time is what's going to get them and encourage them to repeat the same actions again um, so that they can develop their confidence. But children who have been praised excessively can become narcissistic or arrogant as they get older. And this is something I've seen with children who are, are exhibiting those traits, you know, later years when they when they are, you know, pre-teens or teen, after a, you know, five to ten years of being praised excessively by their parents, these typical traits start emerging. And it often is children who don't necessarily have siblings that they're competing with. Because obviously when you have siblings, there's a typical dynamic where the praise is kind of shared between the siblings. And it's it's a little bit harder to overpraise just one child. So when a child is overpraised too much by their parents, it can lead to them having narcissistic or arrogant traits. Essentially, if we're constantly telling our children that they're perfect or they're the best at something without providing constructive feedback on how they can improve, this is when they, they start to experience entitlement and they start to feel like they should be owed or should have special treatment. And, and that can then mean that they become overconfident. And one of the interesting things I, I talked about one of the previous um, podcast episodes was about overconfidence. You know, it was about um, our overconfident parents raising self-doubting kids. And so confidence is a double-edged sword, right? As much as we want to grow confidence, it's got to be mental in the right way. You know, if you look at a lack of confidence, it shows up in many negative ways in a child's life, but so does overconfidence. And so while we, while we think we are developing a child's confidence by giving them a huge amount of praise for something, if we are doing that across the board for every little thing a child does, then ultimately we either A, water down the, 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 the praise, so it then becomes something that's just expected, or B, we remove the, the kind of intrinsic motivation a child has to gain praise from us because they just expect it. And the result of that is a child who is entitled who can grow into having arrogant or narcissistic traits. And obviously that's not healthy. Everything within life, it's all about having a balance between everything and it's never, it's never black and white. Um, we try to make things as black and white as possible as human beings and certainly within the, the character development program we've got with the War Academy, we certainly try to do that because without uh, you know, a very simple system, it's very hard for parents to implement anything. When there's complexity, there's typically inaction. And so we try to keep things as simple as possible. What can we do as parents? We, we want to praise our children to raise their competence, but we don't want to overpraise them, devalue the praise, and potentially end up with children who have got arrogant or narcissistic traits or qualities. The negative side of this, the result of that is that they can have a lack of empathy as well. And they can purely be focused on their own success rather than thinking about the team or their siblings or other children out there. And, and that's where the entitlement comes in. So what can we do? Well, the first thing we can do, I'll give three things that I think would really help. Uh, the first thing we can do is give realistic praise and feedback to your children. So if your child's done something really well on a test, compliment them then for their hard work and explain how it's paid off. And I think that's the key, right? You've done really well at this, and therefore this is the result of that. This is the way this is now influencing or impacting your life or someone else's life. They've um, got ready for school on time. Well done for getting ready for school on time. We're now not going to be late. So that's good, but it's expected. 
they're getting to the top in their class for their maths quiz or whatever. That's something that's really difficult to achieve and so should be celebrated more. Moral praise should be created equally or provided equally. It's got to be appropriate for the task that is given. Getting a black belt, for instance, is a lot harder than um, just passing the fitness assessment leading up to it. As an example from a martial arts point of view for our students. So provide realistic praise and feedback to your children. When it comes to that feedback, that's, that's really important as well, right? If they haven't achieved something, giving them the constructive feedback, right? Or if they have done something, you've done really well on this, congratulations. But maybe if you did A or B, you could really improve and you would do even better next time. That's the constructive element of the feedback, which and can really help a child have that growth mindset rather than feeling entitled. The next thing is teaching your child to be humble and recognize the achievements of others. One of the ways this really shows up at the War Academy is we, we typically award the, the belts in class, right? So, so that we can make sure their friends are there. If a child didn't go to the grading, sometimes what we see with parents is they make sure their child doesn't go to the graduation, even though it's a normal class, because they're worried their child will be sad to see their friends award the belt. Now, here's the thing. Your child might be sad doing that, but they're also learning a really valuable lesson in providing praise to other students. When a child goes to a class and has to clap or support or show encouragement to another child who's achieved something which they didn't, that's a massive life lesson. And ultimately, it's not just about making sure your child's always happy. It's about giving them the tools to be successful and happy in life longer term. And that often means doing things which they're not necessarily comfortable doing. No five-year-old or seven-year-old or 10-year-old wants to really sit in the class and give, an, give a round of applause and say well done to their friends who achieved something which they didn't. But the lifelong benefit of that is they learn to be humble and they learn to recognize the achievements of others. And that is a character trait which will set them up for life very, very well. So learning how to provide encouragement and support to peers is, is really important. Learning to celebrate the success of other students. So teaching your child to be humble and recognizing achievements of others is really important. How do you do that is you search for moments where your child hasn't succeeded, but someone else has, and you encourage your child to, to approach that in the right way. Here's a positive way to approach that. The final tip I would give on this is focus on building your child's confidence through positive reinforcement and praise their effort rather than the results. So praising, so here's, here's the balance here, because it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? You want to praise their effort because it can take courage for them to have left their comfort zone in order to do that tricky thing, which was uncomfortable in the first place. But you want to also praise the result. So for me, it's a balance between the two. So if a child's tried something, they should be praised for that. Congratulations for trying, you did really, really well. You know, I'm really impressed with how you did this. Maybe if you improve these things, you could, you could get it next time. And then you've got to overpraise or praise more if they do get the result. And the, the reason for that is, you know, you, I see nowadays so, so many um, posts and videos about participation medals. And, uh, you know, a participation medal is basically watering down the, win the winner, right? The first place trophy gets watered down because everyone's got a, a participation medal. The goal of the participation medal is to reward effort and the courage to and to show that effort and to, and to leave their comfort zone. And I think within the Warwick Academy competitions, which I've always spoken about before on this podcast as well, is we've managed to find a balance. And the balance that we use is we give every student a t-shirt who competes as a reward for their effort, but we still have one trophy for the winner. And so then we've got a, a difference between taking part, which is the most important thing because experience and gaining experience is vital, and winning. Because what you don't want to do is to praise your child just for taking part and not giving them something extra, something special for winning, because ultimately that then removes the drive or the intrinsic motivation they'll have to go after the thing that's gonna get them the win. And the world is a very competitive place. When they become an adult, they will have to compete against other adults and no one will care about their participation. All they'll care about is the result. And as adults, we're, we, you know, we are, we're typically um, you know, tested or rewarded purely on the results that we get ourselves or other people and you know and I think that's really important we don't want to ruin that for children so focus on the third point there is focus on building your child's self-confidence through your positive reinforcement praising their effort not just praising the results but not just praising the effort not praising the results it's the double-edged sword that you need to be aware of as a parent so I hope that was insightful I hope you got some value from that I hope that I answered the question of can praise lead to narcissism 
Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback on that. Obviously, these are quite polarizing topics uh, we're talking about, but I think they're really important topics uh, that I hope you will help, you know, help so many parents out there and and give you a little, you know, insights like this, 10 minute episodes like this, which hopefully give you three things each time to implement at home uh, to help you develop your child's character. As always, if you're enjoying these episodes, make sure you subscribe to YouTube and Spotify and iTunes so you don't miss an episode. And I look forward to seeing you at the next one. I really hope you enjoyed today's Warrior Academy podcast episode. We're going to keep creating these episodes because I know that so many parents find them useful or get insights or get ideas about how to develop their child's character. But it all comes down to the three C's, confidence, conduct, and concentration. So if you want to get a deep insight into the levels of confidence your child has, the level of concentration they have, or the level of conduct they have, so that you can actually put a score next to it, and then work towards increasing those scores like we do in the Warrior Academy, then I'd love to invite you to fill in the breakthrough area assessment. It takes about five minutes of your time and you will get a personalized PDF report on your child's three C's. To access the breakthrough area assessment and find out your child's three C score, all you need to do is go to www.breakthrougharea.com.